All right, the tricky part again. How much room do we have to work with here? So, our laminate down there is about six inches, so uh, that's what this mark is here. Need a spot for the drain line to go into, and then we also need room for our two lines. Um, I think we're going to offset them this way as opposed to having them stacked up and straight up and down like this because where they come through on this side, it'll be harder to um, connect our lines if they're like this. One's kind of buried underneath the other one. So we're thinking it's advantageous to put the two like this. So that's yeah. basically the size of the nuts right there that'll be on the JIC fitting. So we just gotta make sure that we have clearance here to tighten them. And because uh, bear in mind that the stringer is, is right here. So something like that looks about right. I think these are gonna be more or less in, a, in the middle of this plate. So I'm just kinda like roughly going off that. So something like that should be fine. Um, of course the stringer is gonna come all the way down here. Maybe it'd be good to put something up there to represent that, huh? So there isn't a whole lot of room in here, but that should be plenty. The nice thing about JICs is that you can pretty much finger tight these things and then you're not going to be like sitting there like tightening this all day long. Um, it's pretty much like a quarter or eighth of a turn and it's tight. And so that's one really nice thing about them is that you don't need a whole lot of extra room. If you can finger tight it on all the way, you're going to be in good shape. And we're not quite sure where the positioning on this is. We're going to jump down here and we'll run a bit through the wall and then probably about an inch off the floor right here. And then we can see where it falls on the other side and that's going to help us align this. The, the drain we want as low to the floor as possible. We don't want it way up here. If, if this represents a the floor in this back hold. We don't want it way up here because then that means we're going to have an inch of standing water there. So the drain is going to be down lower so the water can run through it. The one for the other side for our water line, it can be raised up a bit so we're not getting any of this water running into that pipe. And that should make a pretty, pretty clean um, setup like that. Yeah. I don't know that we'll extend these on this side any. If we do, it'll probably just be a little piece of plastic pipe that we can shave down easily. Um, the one for the for the water line isn't really all that important other than we have a thread on the inside. We're not gonna have these uh, proud on the shaft alley side. We're just gonna bring them out just enough to run a, a bead around there and we'll leave the, the rest of the length this way and then we can easily tie into a pipe if we need to, depending on what we do with this bulkhead in the future. If that bulkhead gets moved back, we'll just add appropriate piece of pipe on the, the back side to accommodate it. We'll put more of a radius on these, but that's good for right now. Okay, so we established our height there. Um, that's not necessarily where we want it right here. So we were saying before we want to ensure that we have enough room to actually get in here and put a wrench on this. So 
That'd be a little bit tight right there. We'll probably come over to about right in here, I think. That should enable us to more or less do what we need to. I'm just gonna kind of put a little reference mark right there. And we'll see how it looks once we lay it out on the plate. Um, so this hole is about two and a half inches off this deck that's on the other side of this bulkhead. Uh, that's why we put this, this piece on each side right here was to give our, our plate a nice flat surface to go to. And we also knew that that was falling on this, this slant right here um, from our original holes, which were kind of one was about right there and the other was about right there. So I think this is a good, a good height right there. So we can just put this plate up here. I'm not gonna butt it up to the top because we got our, uh, our first layer of the shaft alley cover is gonna be right here and we'll probably wanna put at least a, a little radius in there. So I think we're gonna be about right in there. That's still some, some room below it, maybe even a little bit lower, huh Matt? There's no reason not to. So I think about right in there. Okay. And then we'll just uh, try and transfer this line over there. Okay guys, so we have our holes laid out on this plate. Um, I didn't cut the holes for the, the fittings to go through yet. Just marked them because what I want to do right now is just use this as a pattern to transfer the holes on to our fiberglass here and then we'll have a nice accurate pattern to drill these holes here. Um, uh, this will be our drain pipe and these will be our two fuel line ports. So I'm just going to hold this up here and uh, mark these holes. I'm just going to do the two plates the same, so I'll bring this back to the shop and then we'll transfer these holes on the other one and we'll bore them out and get those fittings welded in. Hopefully this doesn't shift around too much. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Did I Alright folks, so we're back at the shop. Uh, we've got our plate that we're going to use to take our fittings through the uh, bulkhead. So this is uh, one that we already laid out on the boat and it has our holes for our drain and then also our two uh, fuel lines and then these other sets of holes will be used for uh, bolting the plate onto the bulkhead. We're going to use some coupling nuts which are just long nuts. I think I have one right here. And we'll go ahead and use those on the back side of this and we'll bolt this in from um, the tankage side of the of the hold, not the not the forward fish hold um, or I should say aft fish hold. And so we'll have a, a really nice clean plate on the inside of the shaft alley there won't be any protrusions with bolts going through it or anything like that. And uh, they just essentially act as a blind nut, which works out real good. And since we have two plates, we're gonna go ahead and just tack these two together. And then we can transfer the holes from this one to the other side. And we can also start to enlarge our holes for our fittings. So this is just some quarter inch um, stainless flat bar and so when they make this they shear it and you get a little bit of a cup right here and so we're just going to match those up side to side we're going to put them back to back so they mirror each other 
And then after we're done drilling our holes, they'll also be oriented right. So that's kind of important to do right off the bat to uh, make sure that we don't end up with the wrong bolt pattern and the wrong layout on the other side. I probably um, radius these corners a little bit, chamfer everything, round it off, get rid of all the sharp edges, and, uh, and we'll start uh, cutting the holes for this. So the fittings that we're going to use are the pipes that we cut off of our existing fuel lines in the shaft alley. Um, a bit of an oversight and I made them too long so now I have to go back down and weld new ends on those pipes but at least we can still utilize these for this application so we'll go ahead and, and we'll drill two holes the size of this pipe we'll slip them through here then we can tack it and then we'll put the appropriate fitting on the other side we're just using uh, these fittings right here which is a it's a, a JIC on one end and a male thread on the other. We're going to cut this off. Um, it would have been nice to just get socket weld ones. They do make those. They just slip over a pipe and you can weld them. Unfortunately for stainless ones, they're about 30 bucks each. And so we're just going to go ahead and use these ones. I think I paid around eight for these. And so we're just going to go ahead and, and cut these threads off and we'll line them up and weld them. That's exactly what I did on this end and it turned out real nice. Um, the socket weld fittings are very nice but uh, let's see there's eight on the pipes alone. This is another eight for these two plates so that would have been 16 at $30 each. Yeah not really in my um, budget so we'll just go ahead and do it this way. It'll work just fine. And then we also have our, our drain line. And this will allow us to hook a water line through one side. It's actually just gonna be um, some electrical conduit for the outer shell of it, and then we'll run PEX through it. That's gonna protect that pipe. Um, not that it really needs protection in the shaft alley, but it'll help protect it from freezing. Um, we'll probably insulate it. And then if we ever do have a problem with the pipe where it needs to be replaced, we can easily pull it out of that conduit and run in a new one. So just kind of some forward thinking on that. And then the other side will have the same fitting as this and it'll be used for a drain line from our tankage compartment or our lazarette or both. So that's kind of the situation there. Um, this will run forward into the bilge where it'll be teed into a pump and it'll allow us to pump that out if we ever have any water accumulate back there for whatever reason. So we'll get that in too at the same time. Um, just gonna use a couple of hole saws for this. It's a bit of a slow process, but it works fine. Um, <clears throat> when these are sharp, they usually cut pretty, pretty quickly. Smaller diameter goes fast. Larger diameters are usually kind of slow and can be a bit aggravating. I keep saying that I'm gonna get myself some carbide hole saws. And uh, I always seem to forget until I'm in the midst of the project. And of course, nobody has any of those here in town, so I'm just gonna have to make do with what I have. These work fine, it's just a little bit slower. Probably pretty hard to capture any of these uh, weld shots. Um, I'm just here alone today. The boys are working down on the boat, so um, I'll just go ahead and get this tacked up and then we'll head over to the drill press and start punching some holes. Okay, nothing fancy there, just a quick little fusion weld. I'll hold these together. 
uh, we start to drill them out. So I just have a 7 8 hole saw here that actually measures about 865 thou. Um, it's just slightly larger than my pipe which is about 846 thou. Uh, give me a little wiggle room. Um, my other hole saw for my other fittings I think is either going to be slightly over or slightly under. So. Um, I'm going to have to see which one is closest so I don't have a big gap to fill. I might end up just uh, cutting it with the smaller one and then taking the die grinder and open it up a little bit to fit. S start with these uh, small ones for a fuel lines first. I'm not sure if I'm going to shorten these or not. I might just leave these the full length. Uh, i got to kind of play that one by ear. I might just tack them on this plate and then take them down and uh, punch the holes through the bulkhead and see how they look on the other side. Lots of oil on this and try and keep it cool. Okay, one down, three to go. Okay, well, that's not very good. This guy's pretty worn out. Um, I have a feeling that I Cut a lot of stainless with it before. Um, gonna have to look around for another two inch. Hopefully, I have one. Okay, back with another hole saw. Um, had another one down on the boat. Also picked up a new one just in case. Hopefully, that'll get us through here and get this done. This one's pretty old and beat up too, but we'll give her a shot here. Well, not cutting very well, that's for sure. I might draw, uh, I might drill a few holes along the um, inside radius of this plug right here. A lot of times that helps out. It gives the chip somewhere to fall so they don't build up inside the teeth here and it also kind of gives it a little bit of an edge to bite. Okay. Well, she's pretty tired out so time for a new hole saw I guess. I don't know if these are much good, it's just from Ace True Value. Um, the original ones that I got a long time ago were made by uh, Milwaukee and they were the, the ICE um, product line and they held up really good. Um, since then they've come out with the whole dozers and I used one of those a while back and it was absolute garbage. 
we'll see. Um, this is bimetal. It says you can use it on stainless. We'll see how it does. Obviously, it's not designed to be cutting through a quarter inch plate like this, but that's what I got. That's what I'm going to use. No bueno. Have to try something else. Well guys, I think I'm actually making progress here. So I just, uh, Took a cutting disc to uh, this whole saw and just uh, hit these uh, teeth a little bit with it. Um, it was pretty non-scientific and definitely backwards hillbilly, but uh, I think it might be working. Um, a little bit slow going, but I think we're going to win the race here. Definitely making progress, so we're just going to continue on until we either cut the holes through this plate or we burn up this hole saw. Oh yeah. About two thirds of the way through that plate, so. We'll get her. There we go. <clears throat> one down, one to go. You know, these old DeWalt's are actually pretty darn good hole saws. I think the other side will go a bit better. It definitely helps having a couple of holes there for those chips. They can just build up and get forced down. They're hitting this plate here though, so that's why I had to stop and blow it out once in a while. Um, now we'll actually have that relief because this side will be gone. So it'll just allow that to pile up down there. So maybe this other side will go a little bit quicker. We'll see. Predicting that it will. At any rate, my sharpened job seemed to work. Like I say, it wasn't very scientific. But it worked. There it goes. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad after all. Uh, let's see. 21 minutes on the clock here since I switched over to that one. And, uh, well, after I sharpened it and switched over to that one. So, yeah, not too terribly bad. Um, nice clean hole. Certainly not the best technique, but hey, end result is good. It worked, and we're progressing with our project, so couldn't be happier. Let's get this cleaned up and see what we got, huh? I'll call that a win any day.
Okay guys, well, there it is. Kind of the first phase of this project, I guess. Um, basically cutting the holes in this plate, radius in the corners. Got a little bit of cleanup to do on it, just knock off the edges. Uh, looks pretty good though, happy with it. Um, next we're going to go ahead and we'll split these apart. Not much weld left, it's gone on the ends here. Just a little bit of tack on the two sides here so we'll get these halves separated. And then we can come in here and we'll start to put in our fittings. We need to take and cut the threads off eight of these. Um, four of them will be for the small pipes that go through this. So we'll essentially end up with a, a fitting that looks more or less like that. If we can focus on that, yes. And then uh, the other four will go on the, um, the fuel lines that are down in the shaft alley right now. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to weld. I don't think it'll be too terrible though, just a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I already have them cut and the weld prepped on the pipes and there's enough room that I can kind of lift them up and get them kind of more or less on my lap, scrunch down in there a little bit on top of that shaft and I think I'll be able to weld them out okay. But uh, first I'm going to go ahead and get these kind of fabbed up. I'll probably just tack these pipes in, take it down to the boat, take a look at it, see if I like it or not, and then... Um, break the tack loose, cut them to length, put on the fitting here, weld it up while it's easy to do, and then I'll glue them into the plate. And yeah, it's coming right along. Howdy folks. Well, after a long hiatus, we're back on the job. Um, trying to, just picking up where we left off here. Uh, we have this last bit of work to do in our aft hold basically getting the shaft alley covers down, but we had to do one thing first, and that was to get these fuel lines and water line and drain line connected. So, got our bulkhead fittings done. These will be for the fuel lines. These are JIC fittings. We'll go into a piece of half inch tube, give it a little bend, that's going to make our connection to tie into our stainless pipes that we have in place already. And then we also have an inch and a quarter fitting and we'll be able to thread in a piece of PVC into this. And after we get the bends in the pipe to bring it up about six inches, uh, we'll just be able to uh, glue it and slide it into the PVC socket that's threaded into here. And that'll finish those connections there. So we got these made up the other day. Um, this will be the bulkhead side right here. Our pipes will extend through into this aft compartment where our tanks are. And one will be for the supply or suction line and the other is return. There's a, a set on each side, so four total. Um, on one side, it's just gonna be a drain line, like I say, to drain any water that might accumulate back there. And the other side will be for our fresh water line to feed through. And so we're just gonna use some, uh, I think half inch pecs. Yep. And it'll be sleeved through some inch and a quarter conduit. And that way, if we ever break a line or we need to pull that for any reason to replace it, we can easily just thread it right back through that conduit. So just kind of some future proofing there, I guess. Um, we thought we had this planned out real good and uh, unfortunately I made these stainless pipes too long and I didn't give myself enough room to bend my tubing in here. I have to have a little bit of a bend and then you have to have room for the fitting and, and the nuts right here. So these are JIC fittings and yeah unfortunately I kind of blew it. I didn't give myself enough room in there. I don't know what I was thinking. And so now I get the fun job of going down there and welding new ends on the stainless pipe. And matter of fact, these are the pieces that I cut off down there. So at least I was able to utilize one end of it. Um, I would have needed to do this work anyways. And so that's um, 
I guess, one good thing about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm not looking forward to going down there and welding these. It's not that big of a deal. It's just TIG welding. It's just very uncomfortable is all. Um, to do that, we had to get our generator fired up. So that's what you hear in the distance there. Um, our welder is, is 110 or 220, but they weld much better on 220. Uh, I didn't bother bringing the cooler down. Instead, we just hooked up uh, a hose outside to the cold water side of this, and it's circulating water, so you're just dumping it back out through this line. So this is a water-cooled TIG torch, which means there's water running through. This is a supply, the blue one, your cold water, and then this is return your hot water. So it circulates through there. It keeps your torch cool. Uh, makes your consumables last longer. You can weld a lot higher amperage than you would without one. And your hands don't end up catching on fire during the process of welding. So a very nice kit. So yeah, we got our, our welder all ready to go. Um, pipes are prepped down there. Got my new pieces here. We drilled the holes on one side and test fitted it. It looks real good. Um, somewhere around here, I got some ends that I need to find, and then I think we're ready to go. So here's our new fittings right here that we need to weld on. So not a terrible process. Like I say, just more uncomfortable than anything. So I'm going to go get these positioned. It looks like I forgot to clean the burrs off of one of these. I think all the other ones I countersunk. I must have missed that one. Um, that's good though. It's fine now. Yeah, I'm gonna get set up down here and, and get these get these guys welded on. Um, cool. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Yeah. We picked up some new tubing over here, a couple of 20 foot lengths, because we need some in the engine room to tie in all, all our fuel lines. So this is tubing. Um, hydraulic tubing, half inch, and uh, we have a bender that we can use for that, and then we also have a flaring tool, so when you put this stuff on, your tubing goes through this, then you flare it, and what it does is the flare on the tubing rests inside of here, and then the part of the tubing that's flared seals against his face right here and so and then your your nut goes over the top of that so it's a very nice sealing system um, you can take it apart you don't need hardly any clearance at all to be able to take a tube off of this stuff because you only need to pull it out about a quarter of an inch in order to to move it aside yeah, so we got our holes bored in there the other day. So that's where the one set will go, the other side over there. So the issue is that these pipes are lower than where they go through the bulkhead. So we need to have a little bend in our tubing. And that's why we ran this in with pipe right here and then just tubing for the rest. The pipe is uh, a little more economical than tubing. And uh, for this run it just made sense and then the nice thing about this if we ever make changes to this bulkhead in the future all we have to do is disconnect those short little pieces of tubing we can pull that whole bulkhead fitting out and then we can make whatever changes we need to the bulkhead which will be part of our process at some point and uh, and then if we need to extend the fittings on the other side or anything it's easy enough to do at that point so we just have a board here, um, kind of hold this up. I got a little block here. You have the I do. A little C-clamp action here that I can use to pin that up a little bit, hold it up out of my way, make it a little easier to work on. And then we just set that there. Quick little fusion weld, pap. 
Nice thing is that I can spin this pipe still. It's not clamped down. We loosened up the clamp so we can spin it around wherever we need to. One bad thing about all this is our clamp up here for our pipe is probably not going to work out anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, those were a bit of work to make. I shouldn't say a lot of work, just fiddly work. Okay, if anyone's wondering about my torch setup, uh, this is a water-cooled torch, um, 200 amp. I got a number eight cup on here. I actually need to get a bigger one for stainless. I just haven't got around to ordering one. I'm using a 1 16th inch 2% lanthanated electrode and uh, we're running at like 110 amps I think is what I have it. But I'm using my foot pedal so it's probably a lot less than that. Um, guess that's about it. So the polarity is DCEN so DC electrode negative. And just a 1 16th uh, filler rod. Okay. Okay guys, well, I'll probably just pass you up to Matt there. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see much without a filter anyways. And I'm probably gonna have to scooch over into that spot there. So I got that first one tacked on there. Um, now I can just spin it around a little bit. I'll put another tack on the other side and then just start welding it out. So here we go, wish me luck. All right, well, one down, three to go. That's not too bad. Um, about what I figured it'd be like, a little bit uncomfortable, but got about 93% confidence in my weld. I suppose we'll take the time to leak test these, just to be on the safe side. Um, yeah, looks good, I'm happy with it. Nice. Nice thing about TIG welding is that you pretty much know if the pipe's gonna leak when you're welding it out. If you see pinholes and stuff in it, it's really easy to go back in and fix it. And that's one of the beauties of TIG welding, I think. So yeah, it's 100% uh, for sure, but we are gonna leak test them just because uh, if they did happen to leak, we won't know it until the tanks are hooked up. And by then, everything will be covered up and there's gonna be no way to get in there at that point. Yeah, so that looks good. Um, I'll probably just buff it up a little bit. I don't think there's any reason to the weld's pretty smooth, so I don't think I'll go in there and, and smooth it down or anything. Um, cool. Get the next one set up and carry on. Go figure, right? All right, pressure test of the lines. They're good to go. 